Hello, my name is Craig Tinarello with Interactive Inks and Coatings, and thank you for tuning in to the first of what will be a five short video series on basic formulating within the X-Rite Ink Formulation 6 software. In this video, we will be utilizing a custom-built Interactive Inks assortment to generate and correct our first formula in an otherwise blank database, essentially replicating how a user of the software would likely begin. During our first formulation, we will measure our substrate, estimate our thickness object, create a coloring group, and choose our desired sorting criteria. In video two, we will utilize our newly created formula to calibrate and save a thickness object. In flexography, the thickness object is the analog volume you utilize to print the formulation. Using the same formula, we will cover calculating and saving the roughness factor of the substrate we used in video three. Work off material is often a concern to printers and converters. The X-Rite Ink Formulation 6 software handles work off material very well so we will cover how to handle ink leftovers in video 4. In video 5, our final video in this series, we will bring everything we did together. We will utilize our new thickness object, substrate, and work off container to generate and correct a new formulation within industry accepted specifications. Our hope is that these short videos will not only aid current users of the software in utilizing the many tools in the system, but will also show potential users of the software how an advanced ink room can drastically reduce downtime due to color specifications, reduce and even eliminate work off material, and increase productivity. All the software you will see demonstrated in this series and others to come are available at Interactive Inks and Coatings, along with in-house training and online assistance. If you have specific questions or features you would like me to cover in any video, Please do not hesitate to comment your question down below or contact us at www.interactiveinks.com. Thank you again and I hope you enjoy. Okay, so we're going to get started here by simply logging into the Ink Formulation 6 software. software we're using today is part of the Interactive Inks and Coatings ACT ink system. It's served through an RDP server. Okay, so the first thing we're going to want to do is just make sure our device is connected. We know it's connected when we get this little check mark. If it wasn't, we would get an X. I want to jump right into the settings and go to settings display. Make sure I have everything selected that I want to see. I definitely want to see the price. I like having a fixed number of decimals at 2 when we output the formulation. Um, our tolerance here is set at 3. We're going to want to change that to 2. Industry accepted is generally under a 2 DE. And the formula DE that we're going to use is CMC. This seems to be the most common in flexography. Um, DE2000 is a close competitor to it. We'll stick to a 2 1 ratio. I'm going to jump into the formulation settings here by going to settings formulation. Our recipe correction is going to be in addition mode. You'll see why that's important when we go to correct our formulation that we create. We're going to start with print ready inks. And let's check our ink film thickness here in percentage of calibration. So when we get into video two of this series we'll talk about ink film thickness in greater detail but for now we'll stick in in percentage of calibration and that should do it so everything in ink formulation six moves left to right so if you notice we only have options starting at left we have a save button if we want to create a folder we can do that right now and i'm going to go ahead and actually do that since we mentioned it i'm going to create a new folder by clicking down here and we will start with starting formulas. I like to create a starting formulas folder. So when I create a formulation in Ink Formulation 6, I save it in the starting formulas um, because it's unproven. We don't know that it's going to actually hit the color that we require yet. Once we correct it and we have a starting formula that's known and is under a 2 DECMC or under a 1, whatever the specif specifications are for the customer, then we can save it into its own folder, which could be the job number or really any kind of folder criteria that you want to go by. So I'm going to select it, but I'm also going to set working folder. When I set a working folder, that means by default, when I hit this save button, when it's highlighted, it will automatically save it in the starting formula. Okay. 
I'm working with a high strength toner series water based ink assortment today that we built at Interactive Inks and Coatings. If we wanted to change our assortment, we could do so. There's several in here. We can have direct and indirect thermal. We have in house toner series for actually what we do in our laboratory. And we have a UV formulation assortment as well. We could switch by simply highlighting and selecting. Okay? So again, left to right, we can get started by selecting the formulation button. In this video, we're going to stick to the color libraries. They come standard. A few, uh, the coded books and the uncoded book come standard in the Ink Formulation 6. And we'll just randomly choose a color here. Looks like a Pantone 232 it is. See how that works out for us. And then because my last settings was set, I'll just click back here if I want to go back. I have automatically continue after one measurement. Because I select the color, it automatically shot to the next step. You can follow each step in the formulation process by these little images here. You'll see them pop up as we go along. And as we go left to right, it wants to choose our substrate. We're going to go ahead and measure our substrate and click Next. I'm going to formulate on what I believe is a Fasson semi-gloss material, coated one side, pressure sensitive material. And I'm just going to go ahead and measure it. The backing I'm using is a high gloss white tile. That's what X-Rite recommended to me that we use. Uh, you can also use proof paper, several layers of proof paper if you have it. Um, also commonly used is just your simple uh, printer paper right out of your desktop printer. You just want to make sure you have a nice thick layer underneath when you take your measurement because you don't want your desk or whatever you're working on affecting your readings. Okay. As I mentioned before, the ink film thickness here, we're going to go over in more detail in the next video. For now, suffice to say that I know that 100% is approximately a 3 BCM analog volume, 3 billion cubic microns. I'm going to attempt to create this 232 at a 4.5 BCM. So a general rule of thumb when you're printing is 20% per analog. So since I know this is a 3 at 100% and I'm going to print with a 4.5 BCM, I'm going to go ahead and put in 125%. It's an estimation. It's a guess, basically. Okay, And again, we will get into that in more detail. If you don't understand right now, don't worry about it. And we're going to move to the next step. Applications and additive combinations are more of an advanced feature that we will cover in further tutorials. Um, basically, what you can do is automatically add certain things to your formulation. If you would like to add a little bit of leveling additive, a little bit of increased defoamers, maybe some wax packages if you're going to do surface printing. You can do all that up front before you create the formulation so it's automatically put in there. And we'll get into that in another tutorial. Okay, so at this point, we're going to go ahead and select our transparent white. I have two in this system. We have a paper extender and a lamination film extender. Okay. I'm going to stick with paper systems because I'm on a, again, C1S, paper, pressure sensitive material. And then we want to choose, perhaps the most important part, is what the colorants we want to use. Now I'm using a Pantone, and this color that I chose is kind of like a purplish rhodamine looking color. So I'm going to go ahead and go into groups, and I'm going to create a group. Some of the more common ones are, let's say, standard pigments. Sorry, standard pigments. Okay, and I'm going to choose what I consider to be standard pigments. So I definitely want to formulate with a black. I want my rhodamine in there. I want a yellow in there. Pro blue, green, warm red. I'll do rhodamine and purple and violet one. Okay, so I'll say that's my standard pigments. I'm going to create another one, and I'm going to do light fast pigments. Okay. So here I only want to choose what would be considered light fast. Black qualifies. All right. This ro rubine that we have in this system does qualify as light fast. I want to pick my 03 here because I know that's a light fast yellow. I'm going to avoid 04 which is a standard yellow. Pro blue is light fast. Green is light fast. The 03 warm red also light fast. Our violet 2 here, carbazole violet, is light fast. Rhodamine and purple certainly do not qualify. Okay, so now I have two groups, standard pigments and light fast pigments. I'm going to create another one, and I'm going to call it low cost. 
And in this system, I'm going to typically use this one. I'm going to throw in my white, my black, my rhodamine, my yellow. I'm going to give it the blue. And probably don't want to use the green because it's not the most low cost pigment around. Definitely need a warm red though. I'm going to use the methyl violet, a lower cost violet. And I'm going to go ahead and skip the rhodamine and the purple because those are certainly not low cost either. Okay, so I've created some group selections. When I go through the formulation process, I simply choose what I want to do. Today, I'm going to stick with standard pigments. If I wanted to go with low cost pigments, I can do that as well. It really depends on the application and what I'm trying to accomplish. Okay. Once I have everything selected and I've built my formulation the way I want it to be built, I click Next. Here are palette formulations, essentially known formulas. If we have been building our database over a period of time and we're saving it properly, which we'll get over in the next tutorial, um, we could choose known formulations that we've done in the past. If in the past we created a Pantone 232C and we already have a proven formula saved in the system, it will say, hey, you really want to formulate this? You've already done it in the past. Okay. All right, sorting criteria. So this is how the Ink Formulation 6 software decides on a formulation to give you, to output. In the sorting criteria window, I have it defaulting to the X-Rite Optimum. This is really where you want to live if you really want the most accurate formulations. X-Rite does a good job of their mathematical equations and their sorting criteria. But you can also do a couple of other things. If you want it to default, you can have it default to the closest DE2000. You can have it default to the best DECMC, which is of course what we want to do today. You can also default to the lowest price, the best price, if you'd like to do that way. Okay. So when the formulations are output, I have it choose the best DECMC. It's saying the best DE I can get here is 0 0.07. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and choose that formulation. All right, so here's our formula. It throws out purple, rhodamine, and rubine. It's got just a little bit of rubine in here. What I would usually do if I was on press, I would kind of sift through here, and I would look for the formulation that makes the most sense to the formulation guide. So if the Pantone formula guide says to use purple and rhodamine, I would generally want to use purple and rhodamine. That's, of course under the assumption that it doesn't need to be light fast and it doesn't need to be bleed resistant and it doesn't have all these other application type situations that we would want to consider. For today's purposes, I'm going to go ahead and choose what x -Rite wanted me to choose to have the best DECMC. Now the prices that I have in this system are arbitrary, but you can see that it does throw out a price for me, price per pound, and our ink film thickness is set to what we set it to, which is a random guess at 125% to hopefully replicate our 4.5 BCM that we're going to formulate with. Okay, So I could shoot this out to the printer and print out a nice formulation report, but first I'm going to save. Okay, Because we set up our folder before, it's automatically going to go ahead and have that starting formulas brought up, and we're just going to save the recipe. All right, So now it's going to stick it into that folder and we'll have it when we want to edit it later. I'm going to go ahead and pause here and weigh up this formulation in the laboratory roll it out on the C1S substrate at a 4.5 BCM and we'll be back. Okay, so we're back. I weighed up the given formulation here, 100 grams in the laboratory, and rolled it out with a 4.5 BCM volume using a phantom hand proofer. Um, before I do a correction here, I just want to point out one thing. If you were in a press side environment, um, down here at the bottom, you can go ahead and change, let's say you wanted to weigh up 8 pounds, the formulation will automatically adjust to what you want to do. Because I'm in a laboratory environment today, I'm going to stick in my 100. But I just wanted to point that out. Okay, so as in the system, everything left to right. So we formulated here. Now we're going to do a correction here. I'm going to pop up a window. I'm going to do a measurement of my proof. It will automatically continue when the measurement's up. I can throw in other uh, colorants if I want to. It's going to automatically select what's in the formulation, and I'll stick with that. 
it's going to tell me where I'm going to end up and we're just going to go ahead and click through here now if you recall in the system settings when we did this uh, we go to system formulation settings we're in addition mode okay addition mode what that means is what you're seeing here these little addition modes okay so it just tells you exactly what to add since I'm working in grams it's telling me to add 3.43 grams of rhodamine if I was in pounds that would of course be all different so here again I'm gonna go ahead and head back to the laboratory add my additions to my cup do another rollout of 4.5 BCM and head on back okay so I've returned from the lab I've made our additions to the cup that the correction feature asked us to do and there's nothing really left to do right now except for see where we stand as far as colors so to do that I'm going to switch back or switch over rather to the X-Rite color quality software and I will do a tutorial on both color quality and color eye control or IQC print to go over those features for now I'm just going to use the quick compare feature uh, using D52 degrees status T no filter okay so we're going to go ahead and go to our color libraries and find our 232 okay a bunch of windows open up here I personally am going to deactivate most of these I like the spectral curve and I like to have the visual color here I think most people are kind of familiar with that and let's go ahead and give a measure now I'm not gonna measure actually our correction first um, I never measured uh, and kind of saw where we stood when we first created our original formulation so that's where we're gonna start I always as a rule of thumb do one correction but just so we know where we began and go ahead and give that a shot okay so we actually started out at a 1.32 DE so our original formulation was under a 2 DE CMC we were actually never really had to make a correction here it looks pretty good I'm gonna go ahead and give it another shot maybe I can get better than that okay so 1.24 that's the original formulation out of the gate now I'm gonna go ahead and take a measurement of the correction the the correction feature that we did and we get down to a 0.45 with the correction feature so obviously this is a acceptable formulation we are well under a 2 DE CMC at a D52 as our light source okay so I'm gonna switch back to the in formulation 6 software and we're gonna just go ahead and make sure that we save our new formula so I'm gonna save this here I'm gonna call it Pantone 232 plus one add and I like to just put my name as who who was working on this formulation and we're gonna save that recipe you can notice how it automatically breaks it down for you okay and if we wanted to do 100 grams we could do that okay so that is going to conclude the first tutorial of our five video series I hope to see you at our next video when we're going to calibrate our thickness objects uh, and move into some more advanced features see you there